Well, it's NAB 2022, and of course we are here at the Glen Sound stand. Got my good friend Mark Wilson, and Mark, we've got some amazing new products to, to look at. Tell us a bit about these. Well, yes, it's great to be here and, and, and at last be able to show off our new device that we've been keeping a little under wraps, uh, but we're launching here at NAB. Uh, this is the GTM. This is Glen Sound entering the uh, eSports market. We, we've, we've been involved in a few projects, uh, seven actually, over the last few years in eSports tournaments using our existing product line. Um, but it gave us enough insight into the tournaments to know that we needed a dedicated fit for purpose product that met a lot of the unique demands that you get in an esports environment and we've tried to do that in one box put three key jobs together in a single device that can be used across the players the coaches the referees or even the announcers to, to keep things simple in a tournament so that's what we we've tried to do with the gtm um, it's very simple in its look because obviously the gamer will be using this but there's an awful lot happening behind the scenes. If we start on the top panel, the, the pots on the top, these are just uh, the inputs to the headphones. So these are the, the headphone channels. The game, the team mix and me, their own voice. So they're the three pots. Most importantly, the game has multiple options for getting into the headphones uh, to keep flexibility for different tournaments on different devices, Playstations, Xboxes, PCs, whatever it might be. So on the back, you can see we have multiple sources available to us for the game audio, which can be selected on the back. This can be locked out so that it's uh, accessible only from the software. Where we've got um, a stereo mini jack, three and a half mil jack, for game audio, we can do it on an SP diff. We've got USB audio inputs. Then we have multi-channel inputs for Dante channels because it's a Dante AS67 network device. Uh, or we can de-embed audio channels from SDI, which we'll look at more in a Brilliant. moment on the software. So we, we've given a lot of flexibility and options yep. uh, of where the game audio will come from. Uh, whilst making the most advantage of, of it being a, a network audio device to keep all the cabling simple yes. and powering because it's a PoE device, single cable for all the audio yep. um, and the power. Uh, so that's the game. Then the team, we generate the team mix ourselves for distribution to the other players and the coaches, maybe the referee. Uh, it's very configurable which we'll, we'll look at here. Yep. So they can adjust their team mix here and then the level of their, their own voice. Then on the front we give them options of using um, a TRRS gaming headset as yep. we have here uh, or we have a traditional three pin mic input with headphone sockets for uh, a quarter inch jack or an eighth inch jack. Yep. Importantly these are two separate headphone amplifiers that we can address separately. Uh, the reason for this is to allow for how the tournament rules uh, require noise to be managed. Uh, so if, if the game audio requires uh, that there is a, an over-ear headset as well for noise when yep. they're out of game, um, we can send noise to one amp and have the game on the other amplifier. Yep. So you can work in the way that some tournaments work at the moment. But it also means that we can do noise and game audio on a single pair of headphones or right. headset. So if the tournament rules allow, they might only have to use one pair of headphones. Yep. Um, for further explanation, really, it's worth looking at the software because the whole device is remote controllable. Right. Because there are many features within it. So if we can head up to our yep. controller here, this is our Glen controller that runs on Windows 10. We see the, the, the front panel representation where we can remote adjust the levels directly from here um, and we can balance yep. those if we wish, if they're required. Um, this is where we set what goes to the two headphone amplifiers, the headset output or the headphone jacks, and you can see here we've got the noise going to the headset, and on the headphone jack uh, you can put the game and turn the noise off, uh, vice versa or both, depending on yep. how the system is being used. Um, here you can see that we've got locks, so although you can adjust the mic gain on the back of the unit and the, the input selection, you can set this here so that it's locked, so the gamer can't check or uh, change anything. Um, it does have a, a clip compressor standard, so any shouting, yelling, it will prevent it clipping. This is a more traditional compressor sure. to keep the, the mic levels more balanced, yep. particularly useful when there's a, a team mix. Uh, and phantom power, of course. Uh, and this is pick, picking the two mic types. Um, 
and the gain which can be adjusted here yep. and different bias selections for the headset uh, if required. This is the game audio section where we said that we have the different inputs into the game pot yep. on the GTM. So the th first three are stereo from Toslink, the AUX and the USB. They're two channel stereo inputs. You adjust the level there and you can pan them if you wish. On Dante, we have more channels. You've got five stereo inputs in Dante. Obviously, we're only expecting that you need one stereo sure. input, uh, but the extras is uh, for, for future um, developments yep. that may be required. We know from our experience in commentary that different broadcasters like working in different ways. Yep. So we've tried to put in a degree of flexibility uh, where we can, and we have the available channels so that these options are here if they're yep. needed in the future, Brilliant. Uh, although we expect that will pretty much just be a single game. We've done the same for the de-embedded SDI audio. The uh, four pairs there are available and can be mixed here that go into the uh, a stereo output into the, the headphones uh, with pan control as well, um, if required. And obviously that's the lock function for yep. the input mix. So that, that they're the input sources. This is the team mix. We've put an awful lot of options on the team mix because we suspect that moving forward there will be a lot of requirements for how the team mix works. Yep. So in, in the, the typical selection, we would think that the players within the teams here, this would just be the mix of your team. Yep. Uh, six players plus you, so the seven channels in total typically for a, a team yep. we have here but they can also mix in their coach into that which is common to have the coach as part of the team mix you probably don't need the referee but you could yep. if you wanted to to get it to the players as well then as well you can mix the game as well on team mix if you wish and then we have four um, extra inputs here for future developments uh, and this of course is just a mixer you are creating the mix here that goes to the team mix pot gotcha. on the GTM. Yep. Uh, so you can see it's fairly comprehensive in terms of creating the mix. Um, the two buttons at the moment, um, they're, they're on and off buttons that work in different ways, momentary, latching, cough, always on, always yep. off, and one can mute the other. So right. if you want a talk back, you can have it mute the, uh, the main output channel yep. if you're using it as a talk back. Um, but the, the way these work will depend a lot upon the role of the GTM. Yes. Because we can set the role here, uh, which affects the parameters of how the device works. So, so for example, if this is a, a coach box and this is set up as a, sorry, if this is a referee box, uh, the top panel button here actually becomes the button that activates the noise to all of the gamers. Understood. That's a specific function if the device is designated um, as a referee. Yep. Um, this can also um, set the colour of the device. So for example, if we're a player, uh, the team IDs here, you can have it so that team one, all the GTMs go red. Yep. Team two, all the GTMs are blue, for yep. example. Um, so there are a, a different uh, functions on a cosmetic level yep. that, are, that are affected as well. Um, so here you just set the team up to seven yep. teams and the player number that they are within that team. Uh, and obviously these can all be locked out as well. Brilliant. That currently is the control and configuration yep. that you have. The only part I haven't mentioned on the back of the unit is we also have assignable GPIOs. Oh yes. On the next revision of the software, because we're just doing this now, the hardware is done for these GPIOs, yep. but it means you have interfacing. If you need to turn the mic or the talkback on remotely, you will be able to. If you need to take the signaling out that a talkback or the mic button yep. has pressed, you'll be able to take that out yep. uh, to a, another device. Uh, so we have that interfaced. Um, the control for the GPIs will be on Glen Controller, so they can be defined yep. as to exactly what they're doing. Um, Brilliant. So that's the GTM, and although it's the official launch for this here yep. today, before we'd even officially launched that, because we'd spoken to a few uh, companies about what was coming, because we'd been involved in the tournaments, yes. we'd already had a request for a customization of it, <laughs> right. which is this unit here, the GTM SI, yep. for a system integrator version. This is eff effectively the same as the standard GTM, yep. 
the main difference is that it doesn't have any top panel controls. So this is for any tournaments where they don't want the gamers to be able to touch or control anything themselves. This can sit under the desk or on a floor and it just does the interfacing and the mixing exactly as the same GTM without the top panel controls. Gotcha. And all, all the mixing adjustments you would just all do Brilliant. via the software. So this, this is our uh, GTM. Uh, We've been getting great receptions to yeah, it <laughs> before the show, before yeah. we've particularly started talking about it. Um, uh, we've been nominated for the product of the year, which is great. And we're really looking forward to the feedback that we're going to get at NAB. Brilliant. Mark, it's an amazing uh, device you've created here. Thank Specifically you. exciting, I find. Um, so as you say, first time we've seen this. Uh, obviously, you've had interest already from companies you've approached. Uh, if anybody wants to find out some more information about this and obviously your range of products, uh, but I suspect there's going to be a lot of uh, contact reference this, how can they get hold of you guys? Well, it's our first foray into eSports, so we yep. have put an eSports category on our website now, Brilliant. Uh, where the information, uh, PDF sheets, etc., is all there. Uh, our website is glensound.com. Brilliant. Fantastic. Mark, thank you very much. Uh, an amazing product. I'm very excited about it, I can tell you. There's another two videos that we're doing here uh, with Glen Sound, so don't forget to check those out. In the meantime, you'll find all these videos, of course, on our website, kitplus.com.